languages and the written word were developing, communication was a little more thought for. As the discovery of ancient clay tablets has revealed, drafting a complaint letter could be a painstaking process. Dr Carl explains. 3,750 years ago, we have come across what seems to be the first written, let me emphasise written, complaint letter. And that's going back a long way. Now, I take it that this is not in paper form or certainly not an email. How did they do it? Well, they got some clay and, by the way, written language arose back then, around that time, in four separate parts of the world and along rivers. So along the Indus River in India, the Yellow River in China, the Nile River in Egypt and, of course, in Mesopotamia, Meso between, Potamia, the rivers. Back then they had a big trade like that. That part of the world had this huge yeah, birthplace of mankind. That's where we go. 4,000 years ago, and there were kids, 10-year-old kids, memorising their times tables off, you know, these clay tablets, 60 times, base 60, not base 10, right? So, and so they had a written language. Your kids, are you listening kids, to this? Kids, yeah, 60 <laughs> times, yeah. What's 41 yeah. by 52? Obvious, of course, everybody knows that. Hang on, why were they doing that? Because they had to do that to understand their mathematics. So we do our two and three times tables. Yeah. They had to do it in base 60 up to 59. Oh, my God. OK, so they had written language and they had trade. And we've got this complaint letter from... Uh, a copper ingot merchant. So the way it came into existence was that a guy called Oppenheim, back in 67, got together 150 slices of life from 4,000 years ago, from Mesopotamia. And these are clay tablets, right? So this is where you get a bit of clay, and it's cuneiform. Cuny means wedge, form and shape. So you get a sort of a reed, and you put in these little shapes, and originally it started off as pictograms, and then it eventually ended up going through syllables and finally as actual letters. Yeah, it's it's not um, a quick process, is it? You're not going to say, I'm going to fire off a letter right now. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it, it's a long process. And so some of these letters, uh, they're, they're real slice of life. Like, I've got one here for you. And so this copper merchant is a little bit unhappy and he fires off this letter of complaint. And it goes like this, I'll quote you. You have put ingots, which were not good before my messenger, and you said, if you want to take these ingots, take them, and if not, go away, you know, rack off hairy legs. What do you take me for, he says, in complaint. What, the, the, for so, you treat me with such contempt. So we're getting a slice of life 4,000 years ago. I have sent as messengers gentlemen like ourselves, so it wasn't a servant, it was some fancy guy like you and me, you know, we're, we're wealthy guys, to collect the bag with my money that I left with you, but you have treated me with contempt by sending my messengers back empty-handed and several times and through enemy territory. You alone, you're the only merchant that treats my messengers like this. You have held my money bag from me and enemy territory is now up to you to restore all my money to me in full and there you have it a slice of life from 4,000 years ago a copper merchant ripping strips off a supplier a, you know a tradie and a developer well, what's it tell you the more things change the more they stay the same but you know it's poor service yeah you complain about it maybe we can learn a lesson from that because it's very easy just to fire off an email, isn't it? But oh, sometimes yeah. you regret what you've just said. Oh, yeah. So back then, what <laughs> if, you had to if do... If it took a little more time to draft that letter, maybe in cuneiform... Yeah, well... It would be more thoughtful. That's right, because you, you, you have to say, I am seething with anger. Now, while I'm seething, come here, scribe, and do this slowly and painfully in cuneiform onto a wet clay tablet for several hours while I'm seething, and then bake it, and then, while I'm still seething, messenger, come here, courier, and you personally hand deliver this, it'll take a month, through war zones, over thousands of kilometres, I'm still seething. So that's the sort of frame of mind you should have. Is it worth it, or should I just have the soft answer that turn us okay, away wrath. Here's a question for you. If that's survived for, what, three and a half thousand odd years? Yeah, no, four thousand. How long are our emails going to survive for? Oh, you are we going to be looking back in 10,000 years' time and say, hey, look what that's... That, that, yeah. that, that is a real problem, that we cannot access stuff that we wrote in, for example, Microsoft Word eight years ago. It says that it's not compatible. And so I've got to use a special program to bust it open. And when the BBC in the year 2000 set up a program to store stuff for another thousand years, after nine years, the disks were unreadable. So we're actually going the opposite direction and we're talking about perhaps the loss of history. Yes. And in fact, we had this terrible situation where many of these cuneiform tablets have been destroyed in successive invasions of Iraq. And when the first time with the Bush administration going through, most of the museum was destroyed and they've got back about one third of it and now you've got ICE going in, IS going in and they're destroying stuff as well. Mm, mm. So it seems it like is we're losing part of history. history. But yeah. there, there is a message here. There's about uh, one or two million cuneiform tablets and only five ten percent of them have been interpreted. Why? Because there's only a couple of hundred cuneiformists 
in the whole who, planet. Who can interpret? So here's a job description, guys. <laughs> if you want a job that doesn't have a lot of co competition, learn cuneiform and start translating. You've got a lifetime ahead of you, and who knows what wonderful books you'll be able to write as a result of what you find. Dr Carl, thanks very much. Thank you, Dr Andrew.